Problems have solution. Trust in our show. Oh, 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 no. Hey, y'all, uh, good morning. Good afternoon, good evening to you. Welcome to the Mental House with me, your host, Khadija. Now, you know, this video might be a little lengthy because I got it, I got it, I got it, I got it. I, I need to clarify myself about a few things because it is not my intent or never my intent to assault anybody to, um, you know, mislead them, or also to be a propagandist, you know, I, that's not my intention at all, so I'm going to make that clear, I'm a musician, that's what I do, I'm a studio musician now, and I, you know, do things that are on the creative side, not to try to, like I said, pander or hurt anybody, but I have my truths, and those are the things that I stand in. So you don't have to worry about me not standing in what I believe to be true. Now, unless I've been led in a different direction and found it to be, um, you know, not true, then I should be able to accept that and take full responsibility for my past beliefs, but also be able to uh, move on. Okay, so... This is going to be my final comments about uh, concerning Nick Cannon, uh, the rumors about him, you know, his community, his colleagues, and, and, and uh, the statements that, you know, he made. While I do believe that, um, you know, every conversation is not for everybody, Nick is going to be stronger from this because you live and you learn. Okay. In my opinion, because I listen to the podcast, I listen to Cannon's class because I like, uh, he has uh, Professor Carr on there a lot, and Gregory Carr, I li and I like him, and I listen to him a lot because I like his knowledge, or just some of the books that he's read, and of course, um, you know, I like books, so I like reading it. Those are things that I think that have, how should I say, beefed up Nick Cannon's um, library. And, his, and I'm saying his mental library. Okay? But sometimes it's almost like when you get, it reminds me of this, this, this guy named Patrick. And one time my brother and I, I think I told you this story, we took him to uh, Moss Number 3 with us. And this was when we were teenagers, you know, preteens. And Patrick had never heard the teachings of um, Elijah Muhammad. And at that time, the, the minister was Henry X out of New York. And so Patrick had never heard nothing. And we never saw anybody that had that kind of response to hearing the teachings for the first time. So as we were walking home from the mosque, we stopped at the store and when we went into the store Patrick started kicking white people in the butts okay and we were like what are you doing you know and it, it let me know right then that everybody couldn't handle certain information and certain things you, you, you know, you, you shouldn't share with everybody uh, because what he was doing was about to get himself locked up in jail, walking through the grocery store, kicking white people in their behinds. And that's not what that teacher was intended to do. Okay? So what he did, though, was he poured some stuff on his already angered, angry nature and 
and just exploited it to the max. And sometimes I feel like we get ourselves in that type of situation where it was is, or sometimes we when we find out something new, we just start want to bust over our cup, running over with the information. We just want to share it, share it, share it, and really, it's not for everybody to share. Sometimes you know it's only a you know a certain space, in my opinion, that you should go. And that's the only thing I would have said to Nick, you know, because because when you have a conversation like that and you don't have a balanced approach to it, two sides to the story, maybe just black people talking about it, you might run into some problems because some things are factual and some things are theory. You understand know what I'm saying? Like uh, we always talk about the Francis. Uh, we always talk about Francis. Crest work, and I love Sister Francis Crest, but we gotta remember that was a theory. Um, and if you go to school, you understand what a theory is. A theory is a theory, and if you don't know what a theory is, then look up what a theory is. It's not necessarily facts, okay? But it makes sense, okay? And it also can be labeled as propaganda, okay? So that's what I want, and, and, and that's what Nick is going to learn, and that's what he has to learn. And so, you know, I wouldn't cast away Nick at all, and I think that he's going to come out so much stronger for this. You know, he's not a young man. he got a long way to go. I mean, he's a young man, um, but he, he, he's putting in um, the time to learn from his mistakes, and that's all you can ask for. Okay. Because when they start calling people anti-Semitic, I just want y'all to know that I read one of the most anti-Semitic books I've ever read in my life. And it had nothing to do with black people. It had nothing to do with anything other than um, it I, I was surprised to even find out this information, and it's a book called Henry Ford and the Jews. Okay, um, it's an interesting book, yeah. So now, if you want to talk about anti-Semitism, don't hang all that on Nick Head. Some of y'all love Henry Ford. The founder of the, of the Ford vehicle. I know that's backwards, right? <laughs> um, it's just a, a fascinating and terrifying exploration of the dark side of an American icon. This is anti, what I consider anti-Semitic. I don't know how many people would uh, even say that about Henry Ford. So, um, if you get a chance, pick up this book and read it. And it, you know, it's really interesting. Anyway, the other thing I wanted to straighten up is I made some reference to the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. And, um, that I thought, and I admired him, and I thought he was one of the most earliest, um, well, I thought he was one of the most brilliant uh, ministers for this century because of the condition that we were in. And a lot of people didn't understand that. Okay, so I want to clarify what I meant by that. When Elijah Muhammad came on the scene, black people, I don't think y'all really understand and don't under get what has happened to a people who have been slaved, enslaved, who have been downtrodden, who have been beat, who have been um, sold, raped, and all, everything turned inside out, upside down, and robbed of their nature, robbed of their, I'm sorry, religion, their mores, their names. I don't think y'all really understand the dynamic of that particular type of slavery. 
Because if you did, you would understand the psychological damage. Unlike any other uh, form of slavery, we didn't know who the hell we were at all because you took us from over there. You stripped us of everything. You wouldn't allow us to read. We couldn't practice our religion. We had to be remade over the way you wanted us to be made. And, and that was to be enslaved and, and be made a slave. A Frankenstein monster. Pretty much. Okay? That's what y'all made us. Frankenstein monsters. 